edition. Now, more than six months since the first reported case of the coronavirus, the world is still battling with this pandemic. It continues to put enormous pressure on our frail health care system and, as a result, increased chances of many things going wrong from testing to diagnosis. A misdiagnosis or a delay in receiving test results may have some grave implications for the individuals concerned, including job losses and sometimes even death. We break down what this means for the individual and how to navigate the legal minefield with Mtogozisi Mapomulo, a litigation attorney at Adams and Adams. A very good morning to you, Mtogozisi. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Now, when we look at the parameters of what possibly uh, could go wrong from a, a, a legal standpoint, what is the scope that we are looking at? Um, a good morning, Tammy, and good morning to your viewers. Um, well, in this uh, particular context, uh, many things can uh, go wrong, as you've correctly um, uh, stated, uh, from testing uh, to the diagnosis, uh, due to the number of uh, um, well, uh, the number of people who are testing, um, and also with um, the uh, uh, the health system being um, strained at, at this point in time due to the ever increasing. Um, numbers of um, uh, cases. So that puts uh, so much pressure on the system and the chances of, uh, um, you, you know, things going wrong are quite high. And that uh, can have uh, grave um, consequences uh, for um, the people concerned, as there may be illegal ramifications. But um, the, um, the, the question as to whether uh, the legal consequences, um, you know, can't be there. We will uh, be determined um, from case to case. And yeah, that, that's basically ab about it. Let's look at the eventuality of a misdiagnosis. Say, for example, you are misdiagnosed. They say you are COVID-19 positive, but you find out that you are actually not COVID-19 positive. Obviously, as soon as you find out that you are positive, there are issues of self-isolation. Uh, the place that you work will have to be, uh, you, you know, will have to be uh, uh, disinfected. Uh, the workers, that there has to be contact tracing for those that, that you work with. You know, some people could even perhaps even lose job opportunities and not be able to go to an interview because they said you were positive. A COVID-19 positive, but it ends up that, that you are not. In a situation like that, where there is a loss of opportunity, where there is a loss of financing, are there any legal uh, ramifications or any legal recourse that a juristic individual can take? There may be. Uh, there may be uh, legal consequences. Uh, we will have to look at uh, uh, the reason or was um, the diagnosis, um, you know, would a doctor or uh, a, a, a medical person in the in, in, in that same uh, discipline as the person who uh, gave this uh, wrong uh, diagnosis uh, could not have done um, uh, the, that same type of an, an error. And we look at, um, you know, was, um, is it, the negligence or, or on their part, it all goes about the negligence. And if it is um, due to the negligent, uh, which could have been foreseen and uh, prevented, then there may well be um, a, a case for that because um, there has to be harm. Uh, in, in the particular example that you've just given, um, harm would be um, the missed opportunity, it would be um, the cost associated with the uh, contamination of the work environment, the isolation of the particular oil of the uh, people at the workplace. Those things have cost implications, and um, there may be um, grounds for the legal recourse for the concerned company or individual. So what you really need to do is you have to, without doubt, be able to prove negligence on the part of who? The, the medical uh, practitioner who um, took the samples, or would it be the laboratory, or would it be the state? Um, it will go about the tracing. So we'll have to see uh, where it went wrong. So you just have to get people who were involved in the whole um, testing process. And uh, people who are potentially 
um, negligent, then, uh, well, to whom negligence can be pinpointed, then we have to look at where things uh, went wrong and uh, take it from there. In a situation where the test, the test results come late, we know that there is a backlog that the country is experiencing at the moment as far as testing is concerned. Should the test results not come soon enough for you to take the requisite medication that you would have needed to take and there is an adverse effect due to that, in the worst case scenario, we're talking about death, is there any recourse? Um, Tammy, it will depend. Um, we have to look at uh, whether the um, delay was necessary or not. And to determine whether the delay was necessary or not, we will have to uh, look at um, where was the testing done. Uh, currently, um, as far as I, I know, um, the, the public sector has so many um, um, testings and uh, you, you, you will expect uh, some delay and you will not expect, you, you know, a quick turn around. Um, so it, it will depend where you did it and it will also depend on whether there was an agency um, when uh, the test was conducted and whether the medical personnel um, or, or, or the laboratory was aware of the agency. We then have to also look, uh, so it, it will be that uh, test of uh, the, the necessity, um, whether it was the necessary thing um, or, or not, then we also have to look at whether um, the delay has caused harm. Harm can be um, financially uh, or it can relate to health. Uh, as you have correctly stated that um, in case uh, you, well, you as the patient um, would have um, had to take a certain um, meds or the medicine, um, apart for the delay, uh, you have not taken those meds timely or at all, and uh, you've now developed greater health implications, or you've, uh, or in, uh, for that matter, um, a death has now occurred. Those are all um, uh, the, the questions and uh, the inquiries we've got to engage in. Have we seen instances, whether in South Africa or internationally, where an individual has actually taken uh, one of the, the parties involved uh, to court uh, because of either a misdiagnosis or a delay in uh, the, the results coming out? Um, the delays do happen worldwide for um, varying reasons, and it is in the nature of... of uh, of any employment, I would assume, because even um, in the legal profession um, uh, and the medical uh, profession, evidently, um, the delays are bound to happen from time to time. And we then, uh, in case um, where there's a, a potential claim, it just goes about um, uh, looking into the facts in each particular um, uh, case to say, uh, is there a legal liability? Uh, should the doctor or um, the health department in, in this particular case uh, be held legally liable? So it's, uh, um, it's, uh, it goes about um, the, the questioning of facts. And it happens um, in the, you know, worldwide. It's not uh, only in the context of South Africa. But have we actually seen cases um, in practice, when an individual has decided to exercise their legal right and, and actually, uh, you know, take an entity to court? In, in the U.S., uh, there's been cases. Um, I'm not aware uh, in the South African context particularly, um, but uh, in the U.S., yes. Well, Zissi, thank you so much uh, for your time uh, this morning. Certainly a very interesting uh, conversation and an interesting perspective uh, considering the times that we are in, as well as how dire the implications of a misdiagnosis can be uh, in a person's life. Uh, that was Mtobo Zissi Mapumulo there, an attorney at Adams & Adams.